Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. As you can see, this box set is too big for the screen, but that's okay because we're going to open it up and uh, we'll make it work. I am very, very excited because I went to Target today. Well, I saw uh, in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, somebody posted that all of the Mirage comics, uh, I don't think this is San Diego Comic Con, but I could be wrong. Uh, but their Target, Collector Con, whatever the deal is, uh, all the new Mirage stuff was available. And also that there was a big Ninja Turtles reset where the Mutant Mayhem toys from the new movie are also being put up into Target. So I looked in the app, saw that a Target about 20 minutes away had this in stock. And there have been so many times when I've been bamboozled by that. I'll, uh, you know, make the drive only to discover that there's not any such thing there at all. But Fortune was smiling upon me today, and I got the four-pack that I've been wanting for, you know, 30-something years. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Return to New York storyline from the original Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic, I strongly suggest you go check it out. Uh, art duties had been handed over to Jim Lawson at this point, and he started drawing the turtles in a, a different way from how they'd been presented in the earlier Mirage comics. And this is, to me, kind of the standard for the turtles. This, When I picture Ninja Turtles, uh, this art style is what I picture. Now, this cover art was done by Kevin Eastman this year, uh, but he's absolutely representing the style of Jim Lawson. Uh, and one of the scenes, you know, I've already reviewed some of these Shredder clones here. Uh, I have yet to obtain the rest of them because they were some exclusives of one kind or another. Uh, I need to get my hands on those because it turns out I'm collecting all of the Mirage Comics Turtles. Uh, this is a big, giant, beautiful box. It's really, really glossy, so the light's kind of annoying, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Uh, back of the box, you've got the cross cell with, I have got... These two on the way, uh, and Splinter was at the Target this morning. Oh, no, I, I take that back. I got the Foot Soldier as well. What's funny is I went in the app and was able to order Splinter and the Foot Soldier, but then they had them at Target, so I canceled those orders uh, and bought them at the store. Uh, Zog, a strong contender for figure of the year. Check that one out. And then I've got Casey Jones, who I haven't even opened yet. Uh, but anyway, these Mirage Comics Turtles are, are phenomenal. And uh, NECA actually showed these as part of promotional art for some of these other figures earlier in the year. And I've just been dying ever since to get my hands on them, and now I've got them. So, uh, bottom of the box, you've got credits for everybody that was involved in bringing these pieces of art into our hands. And then we've got a really interesting design uh, for the front of the box that I... I actually quite like because when it's sitting on the shelf like this, which is how you'll find it in Target, uh, faced out, uh, about, I think they would come, they come uh, four per case, but you can fold the flap down like that with it on the shelf and see the contents, which is all four turtles and tons of accessories. Uh, I've said it before, but I, when I had the original Ninja Turtles figures when I was a kid, uh, my play was all, or, or my head cannon, or whatever you want to call it, was all based around these comics. So I actually painted the knee pads, elbow pads, and wristbands on my original Playmates Ninja Turtle figures brown, so that they would match what was in the comics more closely. Uh, I didn't paint all of their headbands red, because I actually did like the different colored headbands uh, as a distinction for each turtle's, you know, uh, character that that was something that I actually did like that the cartoon did, but other than that, I I, I liked the brown uh, rest of the gear a little bit better. So uh, there there they are, looking incredible. Let's open them up. This is huge. This is very exciting. These are the Ninja Turtles figures uh, that I have wanted since uh, I first read the comics. Really, well, I'll take that back. The ones I really really wanted were those the weird. Uh, weirdly proportioned turtles from the very first issues. I love those. They're not, like I said, they're not my, when I picture the turtles, that's not necessarily what I think of, but I love those designs so much because they're so unique and interesting. Uh, and I, you know, those are the first figures NECA released. 
and I recently acquired a set of those, and I'm happy with them. But these are the ones right here. Look at that gorgeous art. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, these are, you know, when I just picture Ninja Turtles, this is what my, my brain comes up with. Uh, all right, we've got a lot of fastening going on here. Uh, maybe I'll do a little time lapse this time rather than complaining about the uh, the plastic things the whole time I do it. Over six minutes just to uh, remove all of those plastic tabs. Oh, I hate them so. Okay, all four turtles are out, and I'm going to tell you right now, we know that's Leo, clearly. That's Donatello. I am hard pressed to determine which one is Michelangelo. I'm guessing this is Raphael because his shell is so much more scarred up. Um, so I, I think I'm I'm probably correct with that. Man, these are so great. All right, let's uh, let's start with uh, Leonardo. We're gonna say I've got all the accessories are separated uh, up here, although I don't think they were necessarily beside the appropriate turtle. Uh, so let's set Mikey and Raph off to the side there. We're gonna put Donatello over here, and let's take a look, at Leonardo. Now, obviously, the the uh, genius of these is that. NECA has put out a four pack for 150 bucks, which I think is a, a pretty fair price uh, of four almost identical action figures. The heads are the only things that are different. Now, uh, sculpt wise, each shell is, I guess I'll bring them back out because you really, you guys kind of really need to see this. I mean, I already pointed out that Raphael has a lot more scarring than Michelangelo over here. Um, but you can see the paint deco on there. Uh, front shells is different. Obviously Donatello and Leonardo have the different, uh, Donnie's got the storage for his bow staff, Leo's got his katanas, and then no storage, well I guess they go in the sides of the belts right here, um, for Michelangelo and Raphael. Uh, the backs of their shells the deco is all the same. Oh look at that, and you can see their little tails which I'm trying to figure out if they're articulated or if they're just posed in different ways. Oh, they are. They're, uh, the tails are actually on a little pivot right there, so you can kind of turn those and, you know, move them around a little bit if you so desire. Uh, but yeah, they're, aside from the heads, oh, you know what, look. Their elbow pads have different paint apps. And again, Raphael has more wear on his elbow pads uh, and on his belt. And see, this is the type of stuff NECA does that really makes you, or really makes me impressed with how they do things. Uh, so yeah, their elbow pads each have a little bit different deco as do their wristbands. Uh, no, the wristbands are the same. Wristbands are the same. And then let's take a look at the knee pads. Knee pads also have different deco. Uh, you can see... Again, Raphael has the most sort of wear, I guess, on his... Uh, but they are all different. Really nice touch. So yeah, there there are little details to clue you in uh, to the differences between the turtles. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so let's get back to it. 
uh, Leonardo. I'm just really going to look at the base figure articulation because there's no need to go through four uh, four identical figures. But this, you know, it's kind of NECA's standard articulation now. You've got a bicep swivel at the top, which my bicep is currently not really swiveling. Uh, and it's interesting, the double jointed elbow works really nicely, but that bicep swivel does not want to swivel. How does, so that pegs directly. This is an ad additional arm. Uh, and I get, well, that bicep swivel also does not want to swivel there we go okay there we go loosen it up it's fine uh, okay so we have an, an additional arm with a bandage on it and i often conflate the 1990 movie with the comics and and other things i believe Raphael is the one that got beat up in the comics as well So that arm, I think the arms are, yeah, they're all painted the same. But see, all of the arms are going to be removable, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, but I will be putting, I'm going to have to look it up and see which turtle needs the bandaged arm. But that's the one that's going to get it. Because that's, you know, it's a different look. It's something that makes the figure more interesting. So let's pop that hand out. We'll put the other arm up there. And, you know, normally I actually, for something like this, would have done a little bit of research to, to look at the comic and to see, well, one, to show you guys images from the comic, which you can easily Google, uh, but I think it's a fun thing to do usually. And I would have looked to see, you know, who got the arm and what, what went with what. But I, I have been going nonstop for about a month now between Joe Fest and just everything else that's been going on. Uh, I'm a little burned out, so today was just not going to be a research day ever. Uh, all right, so that arm swaps out really easily. Let's get back to the rest of the articulation. Uh, as you saw, it just takes a little bit of... Oh, there you go. Bicep swivel activated, right? Uh, the head... Oh, nice. Okay, the head feels like it's on a double barbell. And has a pretty decent range of motion. You can get some nice expressiveness out of that. Uh, the wrist, standard wrist with uh, a disc right there, pegs into the forearm. Not a ton of range on that, but I'm okay with that. Uh, hips, standard, uh, with the ball joint with the swivel right here at the sort of cup and peg. I don't know what this is called, but it's, it's basically a cup with a peg that goes into the thigh. Uh, you've got swivel right there. You've got nice, deep, double-jointed knees. Look at that. Look at those big, thick legs. Look at, look at those thighs. Go watch a Mantar match and listen to Vince McMahon talk about Mantar. He would love these turtles. Look, look at the size of them. The thighs are huge. Uh, and then standard, modern ankle articulation. Oh, these move really nicely. NECA is, I know I keep saying this every time I do a NECA review, but they really have just got this stuff figured out now. Like, the the sturdiness, the dynamic posing ability of NECA figures, just everything about them, they've just, they, they've nailed it. Uh, all right, and then there's also, if you look here, a waist joint. Now, there's not going to be a ton of movement that way uh, because of the shell. That's just how it is. But, you know, we've got a little side to side. It's a nice ball joint in there. You can do a little, you know, do a little twist. Come on, baby. Do the twist. Uh, so, yeah, that's fantastic. Excellent articulation on this figure. Uh, you guys know I don't always love double jointed, uh, double jointed elbows and knees. But NECA has given them this thickness and the way that they've engineered them and worked them into the aesthetic to where they're not offensive to the eye or not to my eye anyway uh it's also really awesome how they've got the elbow pads and the knee pads how they're set here right in the middle of the joint so they're not interfering with that articulation at all but they are a separate little rubbery piece 
just beautiful, smart, thoughtful engineering uh, on these figures. Hats off to NECA, who, who honestly, for probably at least three years running, have been the toy company of the year, I would say. Maybe I need to work that into my year-end review this year. Uh, you can see his belt right here with the straps going up at the top, the nice painted uh, buckle-type o-ring pieces whatever you want to call them there and then on the back his scabbards are nice sturdy solid plastic they're not rubber so they're not going to like rip out or bend or have problems there uh really really well done and again that just that black line work on these uh to give them that comic booky look is, is just fantastic uh he's got a nice expressive face i dig it and he's got an inner chip. They all four have interchangeable bandanas. Let you know before I pull that out. Let's take a look and see what. Uh, it's just a peg, but I am obviously going to recommend you be very, very careful grip it as close to the peg as you possibly can when you're changing these out because you don't want this to rip obviously uh, so he's got interchangeable bandanas because very often in the comics they were depicted and i'm not going to push this all the way in because we've got something else to change out but i've uh, on a, uh, ah, excuse me frequently in the comics they were depicted like with that kind of look going on or something very uh cinematic look and then you've also got, now this doesn't go on Leonardo, so we're going to save that for later. That goes to Raphael. Uh, all right, so there is Leonardo and the basic. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and plug that uh, headband into him because I, I like that look. Push that into place, and yeah, that might actually require a little heating to get it seated properly because it goes in at a little bit of a weird... Oh, there it goes. Plugs right in. Okay, okay. I just didn't have it at the right angle. Uh, so there we go. There's Leonardo with his uh, bandana just going out behind him. Looks excellent. All right. All done with Leo. Uh, we have got an assortment of extra hands, and we don't have a full set of these for each turtle, which I'm okay with with this being a box set. But I will say it wouldn't surprise me to see individual releases of these later on or two packs or something of that nature uh, because that's definitely the kind of thing that NECA does that I approve of uh, because we, we want every collector that wants these to, to have them. Uh, so re-release these as many times as you want, NECA, and give them all the full hand load out. And that's one of the reasons why uh, 150 bucks for these works out to cheaper than NECA's current pricing. So they kind of do a little bit of a share on accessories. But you've got a couple of uh, sort of ready-to-fight hands. Uh, some straight-up, like, karate chopping hands or neutral hands. Fists for punching. And uh, some C grips that are oh no, see that's an upgrade they could do if they wanted to sell these individually. Is you've got the C grips, the default C grips on the figures, with the wrists that move that way. But if they wanted to reissue these as single figures that would also include C-grips that move up and down, uh, that would be nice. I would like to have that. So I'm a little confused, actually, as to why this pair of C-grips is in there. Because it looks like it's just about the same as these C-grips. And they all have C-grips. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure that out before this inter uh, interview, before this review is done. Maybe we won't. Uh, okay, well, since we had Donatello out... Oh, actually, you know what? Before we finish up with Leo, um, there are his katana. Fantastic sculpt and paint job. Uh, they're pretty sturdy. They've got a little bend to them, but they're not rubbery at all. 
Uh, and if you can see the painted detail, the way they've done the paint on these is fantastic. There's a very, very light white right at the edge there with the blue. Um, the, these just look absolutely fantastic. I, I love them. Uh, and those will slide right... Oh, look at that. Oh, do they actually go in a specific? No, okay. There we go. The first one slid in really easily. The second one, not as easily. Uh, so there you go. And that is, you know, they sit a little high, but that's the comic look. And, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta have a little suspension of, of uh, disbelief here because the fact that he's gonna be able to reach that uh, seems a little unlikely, but I don't care because it looks awesome. Uh, so that's Leonardo with his weapons. Donatello, who has uh, sort of a pensive, thoughtful look on his face. Basically the same. I already pointed out the differences in the belt and the, the elbow pads and everything else. Uh, he's got the spot on his belt to store his bow staff. Because unlike the original Playmates Turtles, where Donatello actually had kind of a rig similar to Leonardo's, in the comics, uh, Donatello just has the belt. Uh, his bow staff, just as detailed as Leonardo's katana. You can see the wood grain right there. And then the wrapping, which is much uh, wider, longer, than is usually seen in the toys, which is accurate to the comics. Uh, which I appreciate, because this lends itself to... Oh, I haven't loosened this guy up yet. There we go. I might not have needed to. I don't know if this pose is really going to require that bicep swivel. But if he's going to hold that bow staff in two hands, I mean, the wrappings really should... Man, that's snug. The wrappings really should both be... Oh, well, come on now. Uh, the wrappings should be in his hands. Uh, and the bow staff is the right length. It looks like it might be a little bit short, but it's not. That's correct. Bow staffs are... Um, well, I cannot remember the percent. It's supposed to be... A proper bow staff is supposed to be a certain percentage of the user's height. Um, so this is this is accurate. It, like, oftentimes bow staffs are, like, way longer than they're supposed to be. When it's next to the user, it should not be taller. That, now, that looks cooler, and you see that a lot in, uh, maybe it's up to the shoulder. Maybe that's it. Oh, sorry. I'm out of the frame. Um, like, you would see Gambit's bow staff, and it's, like, way too long, and you're like, oh, that looks cool, but it's unreasonable. You, you can't use one that long. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there's Donatello holding his bow staff, and then we can store it right back there. Slides home on his belt really nicely. I also like how these turtles are a little flatter. They're not as rounded out. Uh, and they do, you know, again, that is that comic book proportion. That is the correct look. Uh, excellent. The, these are delighting me. And they feel great. The plastic is very, very solid and substantial. Uh, but it does. it is... Uh, a nice PVC. It's not. It, it it doesn't feel cheap in any way. These feel like nice, solid figures. Uh, very very happy with these. All right, so there's Donatello. Let's move on to. Okay, wait. Oh wait, that's not how you tell. Okay, Raphael. Well, we'll do Michelangelo next. So, Michelangelo, uh, up next. Oh, I put the arm on the wrong guy. I picked up Michelangelo. But anyway, the arm is going to be interchangeable with uh, any of these figures because I'm sure they're all designed the same way, sharing the same parts as they should be. Uh, so... Michelangelo, you can see his face. He's got kind of a you know smile, but also looking a little more serious than we usually see Michelangelo figures. But he wasn't 
uh, really like party dude in these comics. The turtles all had, you know, a little bit different personalities and Michelangelo over time did develop into more of the party dude, but initially he was not as silly as he's depicted in most of the cartoons. Uh, but he does have, you know, kind of that vicious smile going on right here. Uh, same thickness, th same form, obviously it's the same body and he has got nunchucks that are connected not by chain because that would not be accurate but by string or uh, as it would be rope that is actual soft goods string hopefully connected in here really well uh, my movie one of my movie Ninja Turtle Michelangelo figures the string pulled right out of the handle uh, kind of disappointing there but anyway pretty plain I mean good nunchucks well done but kind of plain compared to you know other weapons we've gotten from different action figure lines over the years and I don't know if they're necessarily gonna yeah they're not really gonna store in his belt too well uh, not a big deal because I don't plan to pose these with their weapons stored so I'm not gonna sweat that one thing I might have liked and again, if they go back and do these as individual releases or, or some other way, uh, if they were to include a spinning effect for one of the nunchucks would be really cool. But, you know, until then, this is great. Looks awesome. Great Michelangelo. And last, but certainly not least, Raphael, all scarred up, looking angry just mean angry turtle uh so he is the one i don't know if this hood is gonna go uh and there's a whole separate wanderer yeah you're gonna have to pull his uh this piece out to get that hood on properly which is fine man that's that's scary uh so at one point in the comic, he's just kind of off on his own doing the loner thing. Uh, and he's got this kind of cool hood as he's wandering around. This is his uh, when he encounters Zog. Uh, this is what Raphael is wearing. Gosh, now I really want to put that arm on him. All right, let's get that off of there. Get that arm plugged in. Switch out that C grip because this is probably how I'm going to display him on the shelf. Because again, it's just it's distinctive. We have four figures that are pretty close in appearance, so I want to have you know Raphael's going to stand out and look awesome and cool. So there is that. Now they are doing a separate figure that I think has more parts than just this hood uh so i'm gonna i've got that pre-ordered from somewhere i can't remember if it was it might have been from NECA direct or big bad i don't know um but i've got that ordered but until that arrives this is how i'm going to display raf on the shelf he of course has his trusty size or psi is plural do you add the s or no tell me in the comments i'm not sure um, they look great. And these, I wonder if you can store in his belt maybe a little better. Yeah, you can kind of tuck those into his belt if you want to. They'll stay in there. But of course, we want him holding them. ready to fight a giant Triceraton. Uh, oh, and we've also got three throwing stars. And these, you know, this is how these were illustrated in the Mirage comics. I think they look really cool. I dig it. Very simple, just gray. That's what they look like. And maybe that's what these sea grips are for. Okay. So that C grip can hold the throwing star because the thumb and the finger are posed uh, 
close together. So that's that's that. All right, Raphael, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as they appeared uh, in the you know sort of later Mirage comics. As I said, this is how the turtles look in my head when I picture them. Uh, this set is fantastic. If you're a Turtles fan, I think it's a must-have. If you haven't read the Mirage comics, I strongly urge you to go back and do that. Uh, they've been collected many times in many places. They should be easy to get a hold of. Uh, I recommend the original black and whites if you can get them. Some of the recolors have not been great. Uh, but whatever the case, the stories are awesome. The art is awesome. Uh, so check it out. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. Share, tell your friends about needless things, and as always, I love being a turtle! I know that's not them, but it's fine. Smash that like button if you like needless things.